Listener discretion advised. Now, here's Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Hey, uh, phone number 1 800 LOVE 191. Fax number for Loveline, 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. He's a board-certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. And tonight, our very special guest in studio, Goldfinger. Now, Goldfinger, so far, there are four guys in the band. John, Charlie, Simon, and Darren. They all came last time, right? They all showed up last time, and we did kind of a round-robin thing. Now, Goldfinger was just here maybe a month and a half ago. It feels like yesterday. As a matter of fact, I'm looking up at this sign that uh, Darren, the uh, behemoth drummer from Goldfinger, wrote. And he put it up there, and I was looking for a date, but apparently there isn't a date. But it was two months tops. And here's a, uh, and Goldfinger will be doing the uh, K-Rock Weenie Roast, K-Rock being the uh, mother station here in L.A. So we're having them on to uh, talk a little about that before the big uh, concert on uh, Saturday. Also, I've uh, had the good fortune of, of essentially stocking Goldfinger, because when I went to Minneapolis uh, three or four weeks ago, there they were at the uh, Edge Fest. And then the week following that, when I went to uh, Washington, D.C., at uh, RFK Stadium in front of 55,000 screaming fans. There they were. Again, not on the second stage. Not in the parking lot stage. Main stage. Closing the show. Uh, headlining oh, no, no, the, the no, show. No, no, yes, no, no, that's no. Uh, the very modest John from Goldfinger. Hi. John, put the uh, headphones on, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Gotta be professional. They uh, were out there. They uh, went after the uh, Foo Fighters. And uh, there they were in front of 50,000 screaming people uh, going crazy. Of course, I'd long since uh, been back at the hotel at that point. <laughs> but I hear the kids were dynamite. It was not Bob's Frolic Room. It no. It was definitely a different vibe than that. And we were uh, talking about this uh, last night with, uh, who'd we have in last <laughs> I just had a little brain freeze there. Who do we have in? Corn. Night? It's corn. on your corn. head. <laughs> All right. I'm not looking in a freaking mirror, though. Yes, I'm wearing the corn hat. We had corn in, and I was asking them about, you know, is there an adrenaline? Oh, Adam. Yes, it's Adam. Darren's ass and nuts oh, pressed up against God. the glass. We're already off to a banner start. Oh, that is not pretty. Uh, I was asking, what is the adrenal- adrenaline like when you're playing in front of 200 people as opposed to pay- playing in front of 50 thousand people and in my guess is you could do a stage dive uh get a compound fracture in your <laughs> fibula and still go on finishing your set mm, it's a definitely a different different whole different thing cotton mouth has a whole new meaning when it comes to playing in front of that many people you know yeah i mean it's pre- it's pretty freaky but once you get into it don't you just go yeah but you, the weirdest thing is time sta- i mean time goes by so fast you know you're up there for like 20 minutes and it's like i mean you don't even remember anything you know it's crazy Hi, right, darren. darren has entered the room darren i got gifts oh darren came bearing gifts uh, incense and uh, frankincense and smack what'd you get for me okay first of all you guys can fight over this Jake. one all right wait talk into the mic you freak i don't know what the hell you get, you're... we did a video yesterday and darren dressed up like courtney love and i swear to god he looked better than i've song. ever seen any woman probably look I'm doing the you would, like that. really you would be amazed and you were straight all right uh drummer darren has now entered the room darren is uh shining like a new penny he's got something up his sleeve all right all right what do you got okay you guys have to fight over this one Wow. Uh, <laughs> it's just a, illegal fireworks? No, they're legal. Saturn missiles. Uh, they're legal in Brazil. Oh, really? Uh huh. Where'd you get these? Oh, I was just on tour somewhere, and, and like I was like, well, I, gotta, I, gotta, I can't go empty handed. Oh, this is awesome. Basically, what this is, is it's. It, <laughs> it's re- it, You light it, and it goes for like 10 minutes. It looks, it, it looks like a box of Crayolas, basically, it except for it's got a fuse on the end of it. You light that, and all the, the crayons go shooting up and into people's eyes, right? <laughs> All right, Drew, I'll have to keep this because... We uh, read the side level. Shoots flames, balls, and whistles. <laughs> I'm a little worried about the balls part, but the, the whistles and the flames okay, I can deal I was with. At a, I was at a store in Culver City, uh-huh. a like, toy store, and I had this, like, these toys, like these little plastic toys, like cop car, fire engines, and like coffee shop, and like and there's individual little like figures, right? right? Like fire guy, cop guy, uh, old guy, <laughs> coffee dude, and this one was like the executioner. 
<laughs> oh, well, that's for Drew then. Oh, Drew will cherish this. No, but I, I got a name for him. He's a sex executioner. I'm sure he will. I'm sure this is going to go under the seat of his car and never emerge into the home. Oh, well, thank you very much, Simon. And I come bearing gifts? With the beer. You came oh, bearing God. gifts, too? More gifts. Oh, wow, Goldfinger that. shirt. That must have set you back a pretty penny. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> wow, that's really cool. And yeah. what shirt do I get? Did I get a Goldfinger? Yeah, Space Girl. Oh, oh, yes. Now, if people who haven't seen the uh, Goldfinger CD cover, and I suggest uh, you do see it because that would mean you'd, you'd probably buy it, mm. it's basically a great looking sort of comic book chick in a uh, iron boob suit. I, I don't know how to. How would you describe it's this? It's Eddie from Iron Maiden. It's actually Darren's mother. It, it, it is a. Uh, I want mom. your mother then, Darren. So check this out. Yes. I got it on my leg, too. Oh really? Oh, he's got the he's got the thing tattooed on his on his calf. All right, please, please don't 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 make it lactate. Uh, nobody, nobody can before see we us. even get started. I can see us, and I'm being repulsed. Now let me ask you, Darren. Did you get the tattoo after the record cover? Or oh yeah. What's decided on? Yeah, this guy in Athens wanted to tattoo me, so I said, "All right, well." Well, it's very bitching, and and we thank you guys for coming in and uh, bringing gifts and all that. And uh, well, let's get to some calls. You one primed? Everyone ready? I'm ready to go. Drew? I'm more than ready. Yeah, you ready? Yeah. What's Let's going go. on back here? Let's go. We're just trying to organize. <laughs> hey, the fireworks sound effect. Rula. Yes. 24. Yes. You're on Love Line with Goldfinger. Yes, I am. Mm. <laughs> mm. Hello? Hi. Hi. Yes, what do you want? I have a question. I need a male opinion. Uh, there's a lot of testosterone floating around this room. Yeah, you I can a good smell night. it from mm. here. Jake, Jake has no balls, though. Mm. And then, I'm ready. That would be John's dog, but go ahead. Okay, um, I just got a new job, and <laughs> as soon as I graduated from the training, everything was going great between my boyfriend and I, and then I graduated and came back home, and he started copying attitude with me. Mm-hmm. He comes off as Mr. Insec you know, Mr. Secure and, you know, just so secure with himself and his, you know, his being and everything. And then with this job that I have, he's become, I think he's become extremely insecure. Uh -huh. He keeps asking me, well, who have you slept with and what did you do on this and that? And I'm extremely faithful. What, what is right. the job? What is the job? It's a, as a flight attendant. Uh-huh. And who, who did you sleep with? I haven't slept with anybody. Oh, okay. I misunderstood. I've been, I've been very good, surprisingly. Okay, I've let me... very good. Surprisingly. Now, what, let's see. Uh, yeah, okay. So he has reason uh, to, to uh, suspect you, but let me ask you a quick... <laughs> he doesn't. Let me ask you a flight-related question, Rula. Okay. I was on the plane, probably coming back or going to one of these uh, many festivals, much like the one I saw the lovely Goldfinger at. Okay. And there was uh, literally... 15 people on a flight uh, that, that could have held 150. Right. And I didn't feel good. I needed. I was way behind in my sleep. I said uh, to the stewardess or flight attendant, mm -hmm. hey, can I get a pillow? And she said, um, I'm sorry, we're all out. And I thought to myself, either they only pack 11 pillows on a flight that holds 150 or uh -huh. some son of a bitch has 140 pillows under his ass. Right. Now, what is the deal? How can you be out of pillows? Well, what would you do with one of those pillows anyway? I would like, put it in my hand. I know, but I would. Excuse me. How is this helping her? Uh, believe me, this. <laughs> Darren, I'll I'll believe me, I like you, but not that much. I'll talk. Don't think you can buy my love. <laughs> Fireworks? <laughs> I've done it before. <laughs> no, just Rule it. Don't. Shouldn't there be a pillow for every every seat on the plane? Well, not actually every seat. Um, as far as our airline, we like to have one for every seat. But what no, happens? You're I do. No, have yeah. a seat for this, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> you know they teach us this in training. That's what we. That's what we learn. <laughs> anyway. All right. No. What the what the thing is is sometimes they'll overstock one aircraft and the other one will end up having eleven pillows like on yours. All right. All right. So just as long. That's, that's a problem as far as um the cleaning crew goes. Just as long as there's a reasonable explanation. So this guy's jealous. I I think so. Have I you mean, all right, Rula? Have you screwed up in the past? No. Have you ever given him any reason? To think that you'd be anything but faithful to him. No. But but really, are you that committed to your relationship? I mean, if, if it occurs to you to cheat, you said so, you made a little sort of uh, comment as you were well, when I was younger. You but, know, but you I said you little... said you made an interesting mm -hmm. comment. You said I haven't cheated yet. Amazingly, 
I mean, if you really didn't intend to cheat, it wouldn't be. A, it, it's not funny, busted really, because me. because you busted it, me. But no, I haven't. I've been very good. Yeah, yeah. But the point is, the point is, you really need to examine what the, what's going on in this relationship. And if you really didn't want to cheat, and if you really were committed to this relationship, it really wouldn't be an issue. It wouldn't be amazing. It would be natural. Yeah, but see, that's that's not the issue, though. The issue is that he has a sense the issue that you're straying, and that this job increases no, the. That it, no, no, that you psychologically, you emotionally are moving away from him, and this job just sort of sort of hastens some of that, or at least puts the risk cut higher that you're going to move completely away from him. Either I'm in denial, or you're totally wrong. Yeah, <laughs> denial isn't just a river in Egypt. Oh, Darren, you are the philosopher warrior. You're the new <laughs> philosopher warrior. Rula. Yes. Listen, uh, you're going to have to convince the guy to the best of your ability. If he doesn't buy it, then he's insecure, and you must dump him and take up with uh, some uh, some uh, straight uh, flight attendant. Oh, oh, God, no. Okay, yeah, good luck. <laughs> Rugula. 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 Monica. Hello. 19, you're on the love line with Goldfinger. Hi, Goldfinger. Hi, Hi Monica. Um, okay, here's my problem. I'm 19, and I'm still a virgin. But the problem is that I want to have sex, but every time I talk about it or I think about it, I get so nervous. It's, it's just I get so nervous, and I can't, not even talking about it. Well, I have the same problem with eating quiche. I'm 27 years old, and I've never had a piece of quiche in my life, but <laughs> when these guys talk about it, I get, like, a shake. You do? Yeah. It's, uh, Does any part of you shake more than others? My left toe. Good man. <laughs> Monica. Hi. Listen, I don't mean to sound uh, sexist or condescending, but... Give it up. As a woman, you really just have to be there. You don't have to be good. You don't have to be professional. You don't have to be fast. You don't have to be poised. You just have to be there. Well, well you know. Well, now, listen. You may not give the guy the time of his life, but you're not going to screw anything up. A guy can screw things up. And I know a lot of people got a puss on. A lot of the women going, oh, what the hell is he talking about? But seriously, you get with a guy who's, who has a little experience. Okay, not a porn star, but just a guy, not, not one of the members of Goldfinger, not someone who's in a band, but just some guy who's had a little experience. He maybe had a girlfriend before you, and he knows what he's doing. Yeah, you show up, and you relax, and let him kind of do the driving. Right. I mean, how can you screw that up? But how do I get to that point? It's, and, and you get naked. I, I don't know where you where you picked up on the fact that she's somehow anxious that she's not going to perform adequately. Well, that's it's what just, it sounds I mean, That's like. your concern. She's nervous talking about it. But the fact it. is, she just is... Anxious about sex in general. Well, it makes her very uncomfortable. Well, what's what? All right, are you uncomfortable about being naked, Monica? Um, in front of people, yeah. Well, no, duh. I didn't mean in the shower. <laughs> so you you don't want to get naked in front of a guy. Have you ever had any bad experiences with the uh, sexuality? Um. Well, yeah. What happened? Uh, I was molested. Thank you. All right, so that's it. But, yeah. but I went to therapy. I've talked about it. I've I've yeah, but all that. Uh, yeah, but that takes years and years and years to to get over that of, of real intensive therapy. And part of the therapy should be establishing healthy, stable relationships. And as a feature of those relationships, you should be able to at least slowly begin to initiate a physical relationship. I think you ought to give your therapist a call and to talk about this and see if you can maybe overcome it to the point that you can, in a healthy way, get back and involved in relationships. All right, Monica. Okay. Yeah, so all right, just wait till you're ready. Wait till you feel good about it. And, and, and don't, but I it recognize does... most guys like Adam are going to be concerned about your performance because that's I, like the first thing that occurred to him but, when you said that you were nervous. Yeah, I am not concerned about a woman's performance. The fact that attendance is what I worry about more than performance. Just show up. Do you want my home phone number? <laughs> Darren, she's uh. already been traumatized. She doesn't need that hairy ass in her face. It's uh, be another five years of therapy for her. Really? I'm not going to sleep tonight. <laughs> you had to look. It was like a car accident, Darren's ass. <laughs> you didn't want to look, but you had to look. Amanda, 15, you're on Love Line with Goldfinger. Hi, everyone. Um, Goldfinger, I saw you guys. Hello? Hello. Yeah. Hi. I saw you guys at the RFK Stadium. Oh, wow. That's the show. Yeah, you did guys you, kicked ass. Did you see John break my drums? No, I, I, I... Didn't I tell I'm you, dude? Happy. Yes. He'd be whining about it still. <laughs> to this well, he got a new drum kit, right? I kind of be th being thrown in the mosh pit, so I didn't get too much. So did you get hit with John's guitar? <laughs> no. So, John, what'd you do with your guitar after went, you ruined he, Darren's he went, drum set? Oh, God, he went crazy. <clears throat> Uh, some some person has my guitar in Washington D.C. I love that guitar too. I don't know what came over me. I just threw it Persons. really far. 
Yeah, it's probably broken Plural. into a million pieces. I mean, after you mashed Darren's drum set? Yeah, side? well, I, w- I was trying to, uh, I don't know. It was It's a really sturdy guitar, I guess, because it wouldn't break, so I just threw it into the crowd. He's actually going for Darren's ass. <laughs> I was on top of a monitor, though, so... Well, was, lucky we, that that's the mile. Kevlar hair mesh he has over there protects him from all, from all intruders. Amanda, uh-huh. you yep. have a question? Yes, I have a, a question about um, ex- ecstasy and acid. Uh-huh. Mm. Um, I did both heavily for, like, last year. Jeez. And um, this year I, I pretty much slowed down, and um, I'm, you know, my head's clear enough to think about it, to think about what happened and stuff. But, I, I mean... Doesn't just that statement tell you something about those drugs? Okay, there is long-term biological consequences of these drugs, and like, the, like the, what? the thing you're going to notice the most, and the most common thing from either of these, uh-huh. is mood disturbances, mm-hmm. lots of depression, and sometimes the depressions don't develop for at least ten years after you stop using, mm. and they tend to be recalcitrant, very intense, <laughs> severe, scared. long-term depression. What, what's rec- recalcitrant? They don't respond to treat- typical treatments. Oh, really? She didn't ask her question yet. Oh, she didn't? Uh-uh. No. Yeah, I know. So what's uh- the question? <laughs> <laughs> I, I read somewhere that ecstasy is closely related to speed, right? Yeah. So that's an amphetamine. Why does it cause hallucinations? Because it's an amphetamine that's been altered in such a way as to give it hallucinogenic properties. Oh, does the speed give it that? Or? No. It, it, it's, it is basically the, similar to combining speed with acid. I mean, that's basically what it's done, but it, a little, obviously a little more. And a little more dangerous. It's one of the few drugs that has been shown conclusively to cause brain damage in a part of the brain called the amygdala. And it's a part of the brain that's important for mood. And uh, it gets disrupted permanently. All right, Amanda. Okay. And Drew, what are the parts of the brain we can do without, quite frankly? And what are the drugs that affect those that we can abuse? <laughs> I'm not sure as much you can do without. Oh, okay. Really? So I'm just checking. Really Good question. It. In your well, case, Adam, I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. well yeah. here's, don't, don't, don't pop off this early in the show. But uh, let, no, let me Drew, say you this. you just scared the hell out of me. The, well, yeah, how much ecstasy have you done, Darren? No, not done none, no acid. ecstasy, but lots of uh, speed. Acid. Oh, acid. Acid, acid is the, one of the scariest drugs out there for me because <clears throat> people use it. They, 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 you know, look at their peers and say oh, it doesn't bother them. They seem fine, you know. And ten years later, you you look at them then. Things start to happen. <laughs> but what are you it, it's talking particu- about? It's particularly <laughs> Darren. Seriously, it's particularly you're not the designing people, bridges. Darren, you're you're in a band. Particularly you're okay. the people that Just play the uh, drums <laughs> that uh, continue to see trailers after fast moving objects. That is because of a brain damage in the visual cortex. Wow. Now, Drew, I sure had fun now. What? Uh, that's a good message for the kids, by the way, dear. Uh, what? Uh, what? We only use like what? Eight percent of our brain, or four percent of our brain, or something? I, I think that, that no, that that is a. Uh, that's a misstatement that sort of came out of the 70s. They're trying to figure out what part of the brain we're using. You need everything you have. It, but you have you have reserve. You sure there's not a part we could just trash? Look, hey, look, you, you have reserve just the way you have pulmonary reserve, you have cardiac reserve to call upon when you need it. And part of that is lost as part of the aging process. Part of it is lost from alcohol, tobacco, other other things in our environment, LSD, whatnot. And eventually you, you will have... S- Effect on function. Okay, and it's hard to say what level, at what point, for what individual, at what dose. But you say you may need it sometimes. I might have all. to like uh, renew my driver's license <laughs> and have to go and take the written. Okay, Teresa, twenty-two, you're on Love Line Hello. with Goldfinger. Hey everybody, how goes it? Hello. Good. <laughs> um, my question is, my uh, two-year-old daughter. Well, she just turned two, but uh, shortly before she had turned two, her father had come to California and taken her without my knowledge or consent up to Oregon. Wow. And yeah, and she was gone for a week and I had gotten her back. They they told him if he didn't bring her back, he was going to go to jail. So he was like on the first flight he could find. How did what did he do? Did he abduct her? Um she her his jeez. His father was watching her so I could go to community college at him. Oh. And uh <laughs> an unfit mother. Oh, please. <laughs> please. Well, apparently you're a graduate. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> right. he, he didn't graduate. I didn't even make it. I didn't even let me graduate. <laughs> no, but seriously, he was watching her while I was taking night courses. And uh, one evening, it was, it, it was uh, you know, usually he'd ask her, well, can I keep her for the night? And I said, well, you know, sure, it's her grandpa. And one evening, he'd ask her, well, can I keep her for the night? I didn't think anything about it. I said, sure. Well, apparently and coincidentally, his son had come down and had taken her. Mm-hmm. And, uh, what? How nope. horrifying that must have been for you! It, it freaked me out. Oh my god! Bad. I was crying. This is a uh, movie of the week material, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
but that she was gone terrible. for a week. And when I had gotten her back, well, before she was taken, she was eating with a spoon and going to bed when I told her to. No, you know, no arguments about it. She had like a really good vocabulary. You know, she was pretty close to making good sentences that you can understand. And now that she's back, or she was potty trained, she's and now that she's back, it seems like she's regressed into more of like an infantile behavior. You know, mm-hmm. she poops her pants. Mm-hmm. She doesn't want it. She wants to eat with her hands. And, like Darren. You know, yeah. things like that. And I was wondering. Darren, what did you go to? You get abducted and go to Oregon? And I, I, when was this? This was uh, about 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 two months ago. Oh God, I was in Oregon. Ter- uh, Teresa. Yes. How long was she there for total? A week. Oh, but how how did she digress this far in a oh, week? It can happen easily. It, believe me, it, it, kids do that typically. If if you stress a child, particularly in that age of development, emotionally or physically, they will regress. Really? really? They will stop. They will stop. The particularly the potty training stuff goes yeah. first, and uh, she went right back to. Yeah. It. Now she'll tell me, you know, caca pee pee, but after the fact. Right, right, right. But it, it is it is a multiplicity of factors. She she was de traumatized. A she was taken from you. B, her usually stable environment was was disrupted. C, he didn't know how to structure things for her and probably didn't continue to maintain the kind of uh, structure and reinforcement of the appropriate behaviors. D, that you did. there's no uh, nightlife in Oregon at all. Well, I, mean, I mean, that's it's, quite a shock. It's it's just very disturbing to a child. Very disruptive, and uh, hopefully you can just stabilize things again in a few weeks. Right, but it was it was only weak, and they, they they weren't abused. Right. So the kid will bounce back, sure, right? Sure. Drew, you have triplets. Would you would you mind if one was abducted? Oh. Oh my God! Okay, even with three, even with two left. Yeah. Okay, I thought that's why you had the triplets. Yeah. Okay. Hey, phone number here one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Fax number on Love Line three one zero eight five four forty four fifty five. The man blowing in the background would be the lovely Darren. We also have Simon. We also have Simon. Say hi. Hello. Say hi, Simon. Yeah, and get don't let uh, Darren hog that mic. And we have John, all from Goldfinger, all shining examples of what, how we treat bands that wow. come in here, mind their p's and q's, kiss a little hiney, make friends with the host. Oh, dude. Uh, Darren, come on. Come when on. your bitches needs to be picked up there. <laughs> I just gotta call my bitches. Can you give me a minute? Uh, and uh, well. It's only been uh, like six or seven weeks, and they're back. But uh, they're doing the weenie roast out here, so uh, that's going to be exciting. And in uh, a smaller venue from what they're used to playing. They're used to playing, uh, well, in uh, in Minneapolis, there was about 30,000 people. And then, of course, in Washington, D.C., you guys uh, did the HF Festival, and there was uh, about 55,000 people. So the weenie roast, only about 17,000. But can you get up we were, me for and that Darren kind of concert? We were actually there last year. And, uh, God, it was fun. I, w- I was just, I mean, the thing we were just tripping out on is just like, we were just watching. I mean, we saw Rage and, and Rance that were pretty much who we were there to see. And, and it was just like, the cool, I was just such a cool thing. And we're, I would never have assumed a year later. I mean, it's just, it's just really amazing. You were just there as a spectator. Oh, yeah. We were just there watching. It was, you guys were selling out. shoes at the time. I uh-huh. was definitely selling, still selling shoes. It's nice shoes. to have an intimate venue anyway for a change, you know? E- yeah, but, where you can really yeah, just you and, and get in fans. touch with yeah, the crowd. Exactly. Right. It, it's really like one minute you're uh, selling hot dogs at the Super Bowl, and the next year you're <laughs> quarterbacking. Uh, Pretty much, yeah, yeah. exactly. Wow, good, good. He actually, we snuck in last year, and he actually got kicked out. I got kicked out, and then uh, I snuck right back in. <laughs> there's a good example for the They made me sign a form, well, too. Whatever. Was, All right. <laughs> Well, yeah, so it's, it. so it's kind of cool. So you'll be on the stage that you were you were just it's looking really at. Really weird. A mere twelve months before. It's, yeah, it's great. But we were talking about fireworks, and with the Fourth uh, of July coming up, I guess it's apropos. And uh, <laughs> lovely uh, Darren uh, brought me the uh, thing that uh, shoots flaming balls, whistles, and uh, what's that? Reports and reports. Reports is, is, is the explosion. Oh, exactly. is that what reports yeah. is? I got to get a thesaurus. And I. Here's the danger of fireworks. The danger of fireworks are not <clears throat> using them as the manufacturer intended them, even if they're manufactured in Guadalajara. There's nothing dangerous about taking a firework, whether it be a bottle rocket or an M80 or whatever it is, lighting the fuse and running. That's fine. But the problem is, is that's how it starts. You know, you get a big, like I've been to Mexico many a time, and the problem is you get loaded there too. But camping out on the beach in Ensenada, 
and you buy yourself a big sack of fireworks, M80s, M200s. I mean, you have like half sticks of dynamite. And here's where it gets dangerous. First thing, first time you do it, everyone stands 30 feet away, like getting behind rocks and stuff. One brave soul runs out, lights it with the end of a cigarette and runs. And the thing blows up. 20 minutes later, though, you're having a conversation with the thing in one hand while it's lit. <laughs> you just lit it with a joint, basically. And people are drinking Everclear. And you take an extra minute with this thing in your hand because you can't find your Takati. That's when the trouble comes. It's no longer good enough just to light it and run. You have to start blowing well, you things know up. Adam, it boils down to two words. Common sense. That's right. Just You know, you can be drunk, but like realize that you're holding an explosive. <laughs> That's right. I'm the <laughs> In care. Right, yeah. We may be uh, lighting this off a little later in the show. A little uh, safety demonstration we're in the Love the Line parking lot. Oh, whoa, we're in here. <laughs> you're in here. You're you're gonna take a mic out there? <laughs> All right, so you want to take a mic out there? Oh, he wants to do it. Eng <laughs> Engineer Mike's going nuts over there. I love to see this there. thing. This thing looks like fun. All right. Jeff, 20, you're on Love Line with Goldfinger. Hey, how's it going? Good. Um, yeah, my question is uh, my, my girlfriend and her friend are coming to visit me. Mm. And they're going to be staying at my house for about uh, three or four days. The only problem is, is um, like now I found myself more interested in um, the friend than my girlfriend. Mm. So, and, and I think I'm pretty sure my girlfriend... Knock it off, Drew. Yeah. Chicks are usually pretty deceptive, so I'm pretty sure she could figure out, I don't know, that, that I'm interested in her. And the problem is, is I've, I, I think she's interested in me, too. So... <laughs> I don't know. It's like this huge twister game. Hold on, that was uh, John Stog. Are you rich, bro? Me? Yeah. Do you got money? Like, hell no. Do you have like any money? I'm like you guys. I'm poor. Oh, we're poor. We can't even afford the OR. We're oh, just really? Poor. Jeff. Well, I can afford the OR. Right, well, then you're like, give your girlfriend some money. Say go shopping, and then you know, bone down. <laughs> Yeah. It's more responsible okay. advice yeah. from young Darren, whose yeah. brain has turned to uh, cottage cheese from all the acid he did in junior high. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a drummer. What the hell? Jeff, listen, does this Maybe girl like... showed her as hairy ass, she'd leave. I don't know. It's <laughs> true. Don't, do not tempt him. Jeff, does, does this girl like you? Yeah, she this friend? Really does. She really does. The, wait, the friend does? Well, the friend, she's like, I've talked to her at, at, at length on the phone. And, um, in fact, I stayed at their apartment, like, about two months ago. And, um, I don't know, she's like, I think she likes me, too, but I... You know what? Show some respect for your yeah, girlfriend. Absolutely. For crying out loud. Absolutely. I mean, if you want to end that relationship, end it, and then date her friend, that's going to be bad enough for her. But yeah. for for God's sakes, don't, don't, don't do something terrible. Jeff, are you serious at all about your girlfriend? Me? No, he's not. Well, well you know it would, I'm asking, does, Jeff, he, does he think he's serious Jeff, about her? Don't even answer that. That's well, ridiculous. Why, if you say yes to that. True. Like, settle down. Jeff? Yeah. Is, <laughs> are, do you feel, in your own words, are you serious about your current girlfriend? I think I was. All right. But, okay. You're not anymore. All right. Here's my advice. You're not anymore. You're looking for an excuse to break up. You just, you'd rather do it. It's easier for people to do it in the form of an action mm -hmm. than verbally. It's like, I'll just get busted screwing her mom. <laughs> in that way, I don't have to confront her verbally. Yeah, yeah but would so, it be easier verbally? I mean, for her? because It, it like, would be. Emotional. You owe her that. Here's what, here's what I would do. Are you, are you actually asking the question, would it be less painful for her to walk in on you with her friend? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm asking if it would be easier for me to talk to her. It would. Okay. Jeff, in the long you, run, it's easier for everybody. You may want to just go for broke while they're both there. I mean, they're just sitting around watching uh, uh, World's uh, Funniest Videos or something. You just come walking out, nothing but an ascot with a bottle of champagne. How, how much does he like the other girl? Is he, 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 like, he, he likes both of them. But a, a lot? You like this other girl a lot? Yeah, I'd be. I mean, I'd be willing to break up with my girlfriend. For I, her. I'd try to do that. But is uh, it, do you think it's just the challenge? And the, and the, and the, do you think it's just because she, your girlfriend would be totally bummed? I mean, is this freaking Darren. No, this is friggin' John. Oh, okay. <laughs> I say go for the menage. That's what I was go saying. D don't do either. That's friggin' I mean, There's a lot of girls out there. Why would you want to hurt? I mean, if you have any respect for your girlfriend, I mean, why would you want to do that? Well, what if she's down, her? dude? Yeah, but who cares, man? I mean, it's her. It's I don't know. That just seems so rude to me. All right, here's here's how I would sum this up. I would I would go for the menage. Now, but but hear me out. I would just put it out there. 
I just put it out there. And if either one of them was offended or said no or whatever, I would back right off. And then I would tell the girl, you know, I just said that because the relationship has run its course. I'd and be I aggressive. Was, I was going for broke here. You would, you would, oh, yeah. Would you use like... Like, look, you're my girlfriend and you, and you want me. Um, you know, there's <laughs> hey, no reason. No, hold on. Get rid of that I'm goddamn it off. Pager. I'm shutting it off right now. All right. Come on, Jesus. Yeah, you're saying you'd go the uh, duct tape and ether rag uh, route, Darren? I, I would. <laughs> Whoa, settle down, Beavis. <laughs> I would just be like, you know what? Like, hey, look, you're my girlfriend. You love me, and and and, and you you dig me, you know, right, other girl. And so, you know, just take your pants off and just like, come on, you know. All right, all right. You have another hit. I asked and fix your page over there, Brian. <laughs> Fifteen. Okay, this is the question about the vagina. Yeah, yeah I want to answer this one. Okay, go ahead. It's a mucous membrane, right? Well, no, it's, it has a it has a mu- mucosal surface to it. So, would the um, tridge be like a snot material? The what? Tridge, vaginal lubrication. Is that uh, what that it is? is? It's similar. Do you want to eat it or something? Oh yeah. <laughs> Brian, what are you what are you doing? You building a woman? Yeah. <laughs> you're you're whacking off with snot, aren't you? Yep. Now, what do you want? I just wanted to know if that was true or not. I had a bet with one of my friends going. Okay, this is serious. He's got a bet. Yeah. I mean, it's Okay, similar. let's answer this. It's similar. It's similar? It's it's a similar... So what he's asking is the stuff that comes out of your nose, the stuff that comes out of your vagina, is that about the same? It's not the same, really, but it's... I, I, can, I understand what he's getting at. It's similar. Okay. So, so does he win? put on the road? I what don't know. Not, uh, yes and no. Does he That's win not. the bet? No, it's really... It's, I mean, it is, it is, <clears throat> it is different, also. Is uh, one solid and one's liquid? No, it's different. Brian... Well, there's, there's, there's multiple there's multiple glands in the region producing various there's the Skeen's glands and Bartholin's gland other things producing stuff down there All right. in the nose it's just the sinus cavity Drew you know how I hate it when you take uh, the female anatomy and turn it into some sort of biological thing God forbid yes yeah, so I like it on a strictly uh, just a aesthetic visual level i hate all that talk about the reproduction and all the different parts in there it's just it's just it's just all just should be discussed and it should be done like a painting drew not 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 like a biology class brian listen you're 15 yep. you, sh- you should be having arguments like uh could spider-man kick superman's ass <laughs> not, not mucus membranes and whatnot I wish I was asking these questions when I was 15. Oh, it's too late for you, Darren. <laughs> I, was, I, I was jerking off and going, well, I got a hair on my ass. <laughs> now. Hair number one. Yes, Woo! now it, it invited many of its friends and relatives over to Asheville to, to stay with it. All right, well, maybe a little bit later we will uh, light off these fireworks. Darren, did you bring, any, bring anything else or just this? Just that executioner guy. Oh, okay. Whoa. Well, oh, aha. Uh-huh. Why don't we like... Uh, that's an actual toy. No, let's go into my kids. No, 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 because he's special. Okay, I wanted to blow up the executioner there's actually, there's actually a toy kids can buy called the like the executioner oh. with a mask and a... Yeah, there's a fine message Mama. for the kids. Yeah. yeah, yeah but they, 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 look how happy he is, though. I forget the name of the, the organization that makes these things, but they make... Playco or something? Play, and they have that whole night yeah. world. They have yeah, a castle right, sure. of nights. Okay, when you get that, older, you uh, take right. someone's head off. There's actually an executive that held this in his hand and goes... I like the X and the mouse. This is good. Let's let's we can put this yeah, in the is, market. It is, a, <laughs> it is well. a poor message for the youth of America. And when we come back, we'll have more Goldfinger, more firework talk, and more you. Hey, phone number for Loveline, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Crowley. He is Dr. Drew. He is John Simon and Darren, all from the <laughs> fabulous Goldfinger. Darren back, fresh off his uh, pager phone call there. No, I want uh, to masturbate, man. Little later. Talk about mucus. <laughs> little later on uh, in the evening, a special uh, surprise uh, pyrotechnic show. Engineer, a warm up for the kiss show. <clears throat> absolutely, I'll put some lipstick on and uh, mince around and, and some I some wedges. Talk, don't talk about that around Darren. And Mike just reminded us. Engineer Mike just, Please. just oh, reminded yeah. us that we are across no, the street. From the uh, Culver City Fire Department, the main fire station. Right. So if there's right. any okay, problem, so happens. Yeah. Hey, we're set up. In case you need to arrest somebody, yeah, no problem. Who's paying their uh, Who's paying their taxes anyway? I know who's get... paying their salary. That's what I wanted to say, Darren. Thank you. Now, are you jo- drunk? I'm getting there, John. <laughs> did you, know, you guys just did a video today? Oh no, yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. <sighs> and what was the theme of the video? Um, the theme of the video, well... It's like a Baywatch kind of thing. Yeah. It was Darren running down a beach. Real slow motion. 
after this really old lady. <laughs> I tackled her and made out with her. Don't you think he could kind of be a stunt double for David Hassel me? Hassel me? Yes, he looks. David Jack me. He up. looks a lot like him. Now, was he wearing lipstick and a dress? Mm -hmm. Just one small, small part of it. Darren dressed up like a woman, and, and you know what? I was surprisingly comfortable. It's <laughs> I swear to God, he looks so good. He looks better as a woman. He looks as a guy. so good. I am so gonna play the show Saturday. Like that. I mean, you are see, you? see yeah. how his teeth are? They're like chiclets. Right. See that? Yeah. They 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 grew with lipstick. They grew, <laughs> really? I mean, it's just the, the amazing things. That Imagine me do. with a dress on, like like. Oh, that know. is. Pull on. Put your shirt down. That is just <laughs> repugnant. It's not that bad. <laughs> I noticed uh, John has uh, some lipstick on his fly right now too. Mm. I, from. I can't really see uh, that. Uh, yes. Now now listen, Darren. Seriously. Yeah. For the weenie rose. Oh uh, yeah. Are yeah. you gonna go out there in a dress? I would like to. Uh -huh. I need to find a dress and some wig, and I'm gonna do the Original. Courtney Love. Thing. <laughs> is, I'm gonna do the who saw have anybody see Hole last year? Yeah, I did. Okay, I'm gonna do the full on like I'm gonna go crazy and, like with like your did last foot year. propped up on the no like we're, I'm gonna call the crowd names and 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 spit and show my boobs and okay but you, you realize that worked because she actually had boobs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> yeah, but they're covered with hair. All right. Back to the phones. I'm a man, Adam. We go. Drew, what? 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 Oh, they just... Oh, okay. Away. All right. Well, we're hopping around. Grady. Yeah. 20. Yep. Yes. Uh, my problem is is that, um, like, a few months back, I was in I was institutionalized for a while, mm -hmm. uh, away from sex for drugs and stuff. And uh, a few months back, I, had, I was stayed abstinent until a few months back. Um. I had sex with this girl, and I went for like four hours without ejaculating and without hardly any stimulation. Uh -huh. From and her part, I mean, were, she was. Were you in this institution for a chronic lying? <laughs> I know you're a liar. What? Four hours, dude! I can't do anything for four hours. <laughs> Nothing. Nah, man, that was it. Man. I mean, I, don't know, I stayed hard. That was it. You know. Yes. You are the biggest stud. If you're telling the truth, you are the biggest stud I know ever. What's no, the, I mean, what's the problem? What you have no problems. I just feel like a dildo, man. You what? You are a dildo. They stay hard. <laughs> Grady. Yeah, I just want to know if that was like some medical thing or something. Take any medicines? Uh, no, I did. Well, uh, well, I don't know. If it might be some LSD. I was doing LSD a long time ago. Are you taking any medications now? Nah. All right. Did you ever achieve orgasm? Uh, not that night. I mean, I uh. stayed abstinent before that. I haven't, you know, I haven't had any sex since then because it didn't seem, you know. How right. long again did you, did you go without having sex? Yeah. How long did you go without having sex before this happened? About five years. <laughs> five <laughs> years? And then you stayed hard for four hours? Yep. Oh, I would have. I would have never even made it into the apartment before I before I ruined my show. It would have been like this. But I mean, Zip. <laughs> I was hurting from staying hard that long, but I mean, I didn't get no stimulation out of it. All right, so Grady. Yeah. Was she dead? <laughs> All right, please. Yeah. With Grady's track record, she may well have been. <laughs> Grady, let me let me recap for a second. Yeah. You were institutionalized mm -hmm. in a way from uh, from from love for five years. Yeah. Then you had an opportunity at love. The penis performed, uh, frankly, uh, like a uh, like an indie car. Really, <laughs> it was more like a twenty four hours of Le Mans is what it was. <laughs> but you couldn't finish the victory lap. Right? You did not achieve orgasm. Right. And that was how long ago? That uh, was a few months back. And you have not uh, been out to the track since? Nah. Okay. All right. Now you're scared that the next time you uh, climb uh, climb aboard and buckle up, you're going to run into the same problem. Yeah. But what about masturbating? Uh, the, the, uh, I've done it, but I mean, it's just like... All right, listen. No, you know, Grady, Grady, you need to be seen by You need to get on a schedule. No, there might be something medically going on here. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah cuz um well, I had this one girlfriend before I went got institutionalized and we we're going at it for like seven or eight times a day. And uh I think I uh, I started having pains like liar, liar, liar. What? <laughs> Dude, seven, eight times a day? Uh yeah. Well, it was mostly her. She just kind of invoked it, man. I was just I can't do anything seven to eight times a day. Nor can he do hey, it for four hours. Hey, man. I mean, Ready? you know, that's right. just right. we, we, Yeah, we're not going to be able to, to figure it out. I mean, just see a doctor. Something, either there's some significant psychological problems or there's some medical problems. Yeah, and if he finds out what's wrong with you, then tell me so I can get it, too. <laughs> so I can drink out of the same glass Grady's <laughs> been drinking out of. Well, look what the cat dragged in. Charlie is now the uh, fourth and uh, final member of Goldfingers, now wandered into the studio, so we have a uh, we have a set. We have a complete band in here. 
And we're moving on. Josh, 25, you're on Love Line. Hey, how you doing? Good. All right. Um, I kind of have this problem. Are you with me? Uh-huh. <laughs> all right. No. Oh, he just woke up, dude. We're playing. <laughs> we're all playing hacky sack out in the parking lot, you idiot. <laughs> of course we're actually, here. At that show, what was that, in, 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 in Minneapolis? He actually played hacky sack. Yeah, what the hell is hacky you, sack? It's that hippie I mean, game with a little bag me. that you knock with your legs, and you know, and you... Oh, is that a hippie you game? Ball, you hit it's the ball up and down. It's a hippie game. It's a hippie game, And man. they laughed at me. People are too stoned to dribble a basketball play hacky oh, sack. Right. <laughs> it actually takes skill and coordination. All right, okay. settle down. Easy there, Josh? All right, here we go. I have this problem, man. I have this friend, and I, okay, I'm a bisexual male, all right. Mm-hmm. And I have a friend, and he like shows bisexual tendencies, mm-hmm. but yet it's like every time I go to like throw bisexual tendencies towards him, like to go and like kiss on him or whatnot, mm-hmm. he, he kind of like rejects me in a sense. But I know he's bisexual. He knows he's like almost bisexual, you know, but. I just want to know if there's any possible way you guys might be able to, like, give me a clue and let me know, like, you know, hey, he's bisexual, I'm bisexual, I want to get together with him, I want to let him know. But Josh, get together with him. Josh, hold him, but yeah, Josh, Josh, you know? <laughs> like, hey, all out. right, you numb nuts. <laughs> Had enough of him. Uh, Listen, Cindy Crawford is heterosexual. Uh, show of hands, who's banging her here in the room? Oh, Darren, mm-hmm. put your hand down your lap. I am. Who wants to have sex with her? All right, good. Everyone's hand goes Only up. Only Darren. But what's the problem? We're both heterosexual. How come she won't respond to my advances? Why? She's, she is heterosexual. She's just not interested in me. Well, you're using Cindy Crawford. Then. All right, but I'm saying this guy's bisexual and Josh is bisexual. It doesn't mean he gets to bang every bisexual guy there is. You're allowed to be bisexual and not be attracted to other bisexuals, aren't you? Yeah, but the, he really wants to just get past also not offending the guy or not having him really reject him in some kind of terrible way. But and he I think already the, tried kissing the guy. Obviously, the guy's not going to be open to much in the way of his overtures. I think he needs to begin talking to him. All right, He's let's a, see. A f- Josh? Josh, that's me. <laughs> Josh, I've known you for two minutes. I can't stand Great. you. I've been on the fucking line for like... Whoa. 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 Uh, wrong answer. I applaud you for that, actually. Me out, but I really got a problem, guys. Yeah. I really got a How much does he sound like Spicoli, dude? <laughs> he's like, <laughs> yeah. just like Spicoli. He's the gay for Spicoli. <laughs> Spicoli, the guy from Fast Times. No, no, no. This All is right. the guy from San Carlos. Josh, okay, listen. Yeah. Listen. Here's my thing. There's a guy I'm with right tonight. Like, like there's a bunch of us sitting here playing pool tonight, you know? Naked? And, well, no. I, you know, I wish we were playing naked, and <laughs> I wish he was just two of us, and he wishes the same thing, but... Uh, he will not. He just doesn't come I on. Think this is a bogus there. call, though. And I, he knows he's bisexual, yeah. and we 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 both know that. We All won't. right, everyone's bisexual, but you can't get any. I'm bisexual. I have to buy it. I thought that just meant you got it twice a year. Josh, what you need to do is Talk. just relax Talk. a little. Talk to the guy. Uh, maybe, you know, get the bridge out for him if he's got a tough shot or something. And uh, act like a little gentleman and uh, also get him drunk and hurt either. Send him flowers. Drew, you got a bridge yeah. with him? Huh? Send him flowers. That's a nice thing. Oh, oh, that's right. We got... <laughs> we got to play a song. I forgot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, forgot about that. <laughs> I thought you guys were just here to hang and have a good time. But we have a little uh, song by Goldfinger. I would like you all to listen to it. That's not in your bedroom. Pay attention. That's right. It is called Mabel. <laughs> Mabel by the lovely Goldfinger. You like and that word. we will be coming back with uh, our own little pyrotechnic show after this. All right, everyone, settle in. Uh, I'm not going to give the phone number out yet. I'll give it after a little... Uh, you want my home phone number? 10-second ID. That would be a tremendous <laughs> mistake. No way. Yes, it would. Uh, not for you, but for the people who actually are foolhardy mm. enough to show up at your apartment. Uh, we have a big pyrotechnics uh, show planned. I'm so bummed that I didn't bring more. Uh, that's okay. Well, uh, uh, this is radio. We'll embellish. <laughs> Shh, bang. Yes, we'll do it at the uh, end of the show. Uh, Engineer Mike, who rarely gets off his wide ass, but 
In this case, he's moving around like a like a. He's working like a beaver back there. He has the cords lined up. They're going out. Into, they're going into the parking lot. So uh, stay tuned for uh, really. I think uh, the first uh, pyrotechnics show we've had on Love Line. I'm sexually attracted to Mike. Hey, you are. Yeah. You like uh, a full full he likes hairy man? men. Yes, and he like only himself. has he only has one nut, so he cannot impregnate you, Darren. Well. I don't care. One, two, three don't matter to me. I'm hey! just saying, drink up, loosen up, and just stay open to it. And we'll be back in 10. Cord cut. <laughs> hey, right into the mic. Wait a minute, John, you have a shrinking nut? I have like a, like a smaller, one smaller than the other. All right, wait a minute. We're, we're going to get to that in one second. Let me reset, as they say. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Fax number 310 854 4455. Here with John. Simon, Charlie, and Darren, all from Goldfinger, and we were talking about John's shrinking nut. Actually, you know what? There's a real question I have is, do they ever, like, you know how the older you get, I don't know if gravity takes control of the sack like it does the uh, <laughs> the breasts? I mean, is there ever such a thing as a sack tuck or anything like that? Like, Not that I'm aware of. Am yes. I, my sack hangs so low. It looks like an elephant ear. And it's like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at some point, I mean, you know, I'm 28. I mean, the older I get, I'm just worried, you know, what if it just keeps... All right. First off, there is a sack tuck because I heard a guy on another radio show uh, about a year ago talking about getting it, like, evened up. Because you know how, like, one side will hang a little lower than the other? No, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't mind oh, that. Oh, this so friend of mine like has that down. problem. No, I'm looking good. <laughs> and, oh, have you been talking up, Simon? Mm -hmm. Oh, very good man. Me too. But there is a tuck. There is a cosmetic uh, procedure for that. And you, 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 that's really after the nose job, after the calf We're implants, calculus. after the facelift, then you get a ball job? Know, that's last on the list. But calculus. But, a ball job. But, Drew, I think what John's asking is, does gravity affect one's yes. testicles yes. any more than any other part of one's body? But no less either. No less. Okay, so it's 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 very even. <laughs> but the, wor the worst thing about it is it gives the illusion that um your, your penis is smaller. It's shrinking. Right. So you know what I mean? Your, your penis doesn't like sag as well. It, no. I'm gonna get my penis, my penis sags, one, you no. know. Yeah, you'd okay. think the penis would just pick up a clue by hanging so close to the testicles. Like Something you think the like nuts that. would go, Come on, get on board. Yeah. I'm yeah. going down, let's go. <laughs> it's like the illusion though, you know. All right, so to it. you, you want to show us a little later? Maybe um, after another beer? Maybe you and me. Okay, we'll do it during I'll the show commercial break. No, 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 we're tired of your ass. It looks like an elephant ear, Simon. <laughs> really? <laughs> and it has a memory sucks. like an elephant, too. Herman, <laughs> 17, you're on Love Line with Goldfinger and John Sagging Nut. Hey, what's up, <laughs> John Sagging Nut? <laughs> That'll be the Dude, name of the next CD. Did you read that? Hey, I caught you yeah. guys at the Troubadour when you played with Real Big Fish and Blink. Yeah. You guys rock, man. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, um, I have two questions. First of all, what do you guys think of the little, like, L.A. underground scene? It's like, you know, like the little the bands around here? There's some great, great bands in Los Angeles. Some amazing bands. Like, what bands do you like? Trickster. Trickster. Warrant. Queen Drake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, Real Big Fish are probably my favorite band, man. I mean, you saw them that night, right? What do you think of Real Big Fish? They're my favorite, but by far, my, they're going to be the Duran Duran in the 90s. I really, truly believe that. You know, Skeletons are one of my all. They, that, the Skeletons deserve more than any other band, local band, I think, too. They've been around forever, and yeah. they're amazing. Face to face. No yeah. effects. And uh, my other question is, hello? Chopper, Herman, Chopper one. Herman. I'm sorry. Props out to Chopper One. Herman, go yeah. turn your radio down. We'll oh, wait. My, my radio is down. Well, what's that I hear in the background? It's boner. Skin Hodge. No, it's in the other room. I'm, I'm, I can it hear does it sound kind of like chips or something. All right, Herman, what's your next question? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, you know your video? I was watching it last time or whatever, right? And um, it kind of resembles, the like, if you guys are, like, mocking the Just a Girl video by No Doubt. Is that, no. like, did you end up? No, no, no. We would no. not mock anything about that band. I think They're we probably just ripped band. them off. They're great, and we would not. So it was more of an o o homage than oh, it was a and, mock. And Herman, o ode to Tony. Videos get made a long time before you actually see them, and I think that No Doubt video came out in the interim. Do you know what I mean? Like, we had no idea what it looked like. Right, so you hadn't had the chance to see it for a few weeks on MTV you like before No Doubt, you... dude? Uh, we got rid of him. Uh, I'll answer dude? for him. Right. Hey, dude, do you like No Doubt? What was your question? Like pumpkin video. <laughs> we were Je trying to rip off the Jewel video, actually. <laughs> Jennifer. Hello? 14, you're on Love Line. Hi. Um, this is kind of embarrassing, but the thing is, my test is really small for my age, and I don't know. It just kind of makes me feel sort of insecure because I go to this really small private school, and there's only about 15 girls, and most of them are pretty well-developed, and the guys are just sort of 
you know, they kind of get me about it. How old are you? Yeah. 14. Uh, Don't well, worry about it. Things will change. You yeah. know what? Yeah, because because gravity will take effect. Because yeah. most guys uh, most guys don't don't really don't really care. Like yeah, 90, 95. Well, okay, maybe when you're fourteen, they they, they, they think they think they do. But yeah, fourteen. Boobs, boobs. You know what? You're, you're, this is, you're Adam, gonna, this is where you you diverge from your your uh, soulmate there. Right. Yes, Darren. I'm <laughs> yes, sorry. Yes, old soulmate one. <laughs> we we do part ways at the bra. Because I enjoy the large uh, breasted enjoy, women. Yeah, but more than a mouthful is a waist, my friend. Oh, uh, okay. No, please, don't. You're gonna make me cry. Don't talk that way. <laughs> I'm gonna hold my ears. Please, Darren. Okay, okay, hey, okay they're good. They're, what's good for, they're good for like five minutes. Jennifer. Jennifer, you know what? In, in about five years, all these dudes are gonna be wanting you so bad, and you're gonna be shining them all. I, I swear to God. So. I mean, I know it doesn't. Well, it doesn't matter to you right now, but it's, and the, it's. The other thing is, like right now, like three of my best friends, they're all. I don't know. All the guys are like going after them, and they all think they're really hot, and they just pretty much leave me alone. But Jennifer, look at most of the major female uh, stars and celebrities who men are going after uh, Sandra Bullock and the like. These are all fairly small-chested women. But more importantly, uh, we we all take great interest in looking at their high school yearbooks and who they were before they were stars when they were like Jennifer. Goofy. They were the one. Yeah, they were goofy, or they right. were not the one. That, well, but but the point is that that the people Come that on. are the most popular or who have the most uh, attractive features at the age of thirteen or fourteen are usually not the ones that end up with the best uh, attributes. Right, but, Jen, yeah. you're fourteen. Yes, yeah, she is. I saw this. I saw this thing or read it somewhere that says when women go through when they're thirteen or fourteen or twelve, thirteen, fourteen, they go through a really difficult period where they're insecure. Like more than men, I more think so everybody. than men. Yeah, like more, way more so than men. Darren, like, just because you didn't go through that doesn't mean other men didn't go through. I'm this. still going hey, through it. When he's 50, Darren, it's you read him. You know, it's gonna be <laughs> brutal. Yeah, I actually read, and and it's true that they, they do. So don't even worry about it. Like John, John, nail it right on the head. In a few years, four years or so, guys are gonna be all over you, and you're gonna be like. And in like, ten years, all your friends are gonna be so fat. Yeah, that's right. Ten years, it's your it's friends gonna be gonna... fat, and they're like, "How come you stayed thin?" And then their boobs will be down there with John's nut. <laughs> Kelly, twenty nine. Hi. Hey. How are you? Good. Good. Listen, I have a problem. Some people What's have no problem? idea we're doing a radio uh -uh. show. <laughs> I think they just called me at home. Hey, you're <laughs> okay, goodbye, board. Adam. Um, my husband likes to have sex with all my friends. Oh, that's a problem. <laughs> Why are you still with him? Because I love him. Oh, please. Uh, uh, this guy is an asshole. Thank can you. I say that? Yes, yeah, you can, Drew. You know, but he's really getting bad. Oh, all right, please. Kelly. 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 Sick, sick, poor, sick, pathetic Kelly. When it was with three of my friends, I didn't care. Well, I Darren, didn't settle too. down now. Hold on. I Hold on. <laughs> Kelly, yeah, please. Kelly, stifle, too. stifle yourself okay. for a second. I she heard just, what you said. Yes, yeah. I, I heard it. How many of your friends has he been with? Three. Okay. Hey, good call there. How many of his friends have you been with? None. She's been with her friends. How many no, I've been with my been? friends. Oh, okay. With him? No. Why not? Because uh, she's with her friends. Yeah, but I'm saying as long as she's going to be with her friends and he's going to be with her friends, it would seem that eventually... Is it a menage theme? It would cross. No, it's is, not a menage thing. Is your are the, your friends that you've been with male? No, they're female. Oh. Right. Everyone's with her friends. Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> Has have uh, and before we explore what's wrong with you, let's talk about the menage factor here. Just okay. just indulge me. How okay. come has it ever come up that the three of you get together? Well, yeah. And why has that not happened? Since it's a sort of anything goes relationship. Well, because they usually choose him over me. Mm. That's salt in the wound. Are you guys all doing drugs? No, not at all. I wish it would make it a lot. Should easier. they start? Yeah, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it, something's really wrong here. Really wrong. Well, you know, there's really alcohol, wrong. Alcohol Kelly, and spa involved. Well, yeah, you mix a jacuzzi and beer, and uh, you got sexual escapades. Kelly, how long have you been married? Ten years. No. And it, do you get along fine with the guy? Oh yeah. Do you have kids? Yeah, two. Uh, uh, Fourteen. Did you ten. did you give your 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 consent for this? Did Fourteen. You? I watched. She was fifteen when she had her first she child. She watches. I watch. Whoa. How All right. How does she know? Do you have a video camera? <laughs> yeah, I do. Kelly. Yeah. All right. Here's you know, We get these calls once in a while, and we assume everyone's insane, but, uh, but I will make this argument. 
Are they insane, or are they just so sane and so secure that they can handle it? Let, let, let me. Let I me. It's. I think it's. I'm. I'm so sane and so secure I can handle it. No, you wouldn't be calling if you could. No. No. Not only that. Let, let me I assure just, you. No. No. You know what it is. You know what I'm curious about is I want to know how many other wives do this for their husbands. Not many. No, okay. Kelly. This Not is enough. A, this is a, I'm sorry, but this is a very sick situation. It's sick. Yeah. Why mm-hmm. is it sick? Yeah. Because it there there is. There's no true intimacy. I don't know what happened to you that leads you to to put up with this form of abuse, but this is a terribly abusive situation. It's abusive. Yes. Well, All right, wait. It's I'm going to natural, which is the main. I'm going to play devil's advocate here. What? What? Uh, to, why explore what happened to Kelly? Did anything happen to you coming up, Kelly? <laughs> oh no, I had a beautiful child. No molestation. Oh no. Any? Uh, any? Ever go uh, camping with a priest? Oh never. <laughs> Nothing ever. You ever see a guy's hairy ass when you're growing up? <laughs> yeah. No. Like I was traumatized about an hour ago no. with Darren's ass, Kelly. Although, Although that testicle would probably have traumatized me. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh. God. <laughs> Kelly, listen, all right, I'm playing devil's advocate. There's certain cultures uh-huh. where this sort of thing goes on. Right. And in many different cultures now, now in this world of ours. You heard about that when ours. we had those girls that wrote that book, You'll Never Sleep in This Town Again, and right. they were subjected to those cultures. Right. How do they feel about that? Nine times out of ten, no. it's because... Okay, okay. 99 times out of 100. 99 times out of 100, it's because they were subjected to some sort of abuse, uh, be it uh, be it incest or be it some sort of drug abuse or something or like that. emotional abuse when they were growing up. They, but, were, they, don't, they don't even aware of it. Everybody, listen, I, I have seen people live through heinous abuse, mm-hmm. and, and, and invariably, without exception, in my opening discussion with them, you ask them how their childhood was, uh-huh. it was happy, it was wonderful. Right. Dad was never home. He beat us a few times. It was great. Oh, right. Kelly, be honest. Anything like that? Uh, my parents are divorced. All right. Well, that that in this day, that's not not that. You know, I'm the youngest. Old of, news. I'm the youngest of nine children. All right, but Kelly, you've been married for ten years. Ten years. You take care of your kids. Had a Absolutely. child when she was fifteen. Yes, I did. All right. Well, that is a strike against you, Kelly, in the sanity department. But okay, we're moving on. Well, hey, you know what? I made a mistake, but I lived up to it. All right. You take care of your kids. That's You're responsible. Right. Your husband has a job. Absolutely. You're, you're not on the doll. I, I stay home all day. You, you don't do drugs, kids. and no. you, you like to explore things sexually, yeah. and no one's uptight, and, and it hasn't hurt the relationship, and you guys still love each other. Well, yeah. What? what? Uh, if everything's cool, why are you calling a radio well, advice because, show? Because, because I just, you know, I sometimes I sit back and I think about it, and I think, am I crazy? Yes. You know? Why, you know, why should... I'd be allowing this. That's happen. correct. That is the question. And it's only because you have something in your past history where you have been subjected to some form of emotional abuse, and so you really don't even identify it when it's happening to you. It's natural for you because it's always been your posture. It's the way your dad treated you, whatever it was. Your brothers treated you this way, and you took it, and you're taking it now. I don't know if I agree. All right. Well, but whatever. Look, he's got a degree. Your brain's a mush from the acid, so please, <laughs> we, we have to... We have to defer to Drew on this one, Rob. I'm not a drug addict. <laughs> you know what the problem? The problem, but there, in all honesty, the problem is that out of the last 20 years, the our, the American culture kind of went, oh, that's cool, that's a good thing to be doing, and a lot of people were destroyed emotionally as a result of it, and it's it's now quite clear that it's swinging, not not uh, systematically or not being open to true intimacy and just going for all kinds of other weird, wild stuff, and people end up getting terribly hurt by it, particularly women. Get very hurt by this. Well, and the kids and, too. And, and they don't even she think didn't say about. She was being hurt. She just said she's she, questioning. She why. said, "Why am I taking this? Why am I putting up with this? Do, do all wives put up with this?" But she didn't say she was hurt, though. Put up with it, is what she said. Do they have to go through this? That, that's how she counts no, 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 it. No, no. She okay. said, "Do this for their husbands." All right. Well, that, not for herself. That's the whole right. point. This is something she thinks she should have. And that's Police. exactly the all right. issue. Everyone, Drew, stop alienating the guests. Please. Let's just <laughs> no, relax. I, I hear you, Drew, brother. Yeah. You over, <laughs> okay. Okay. One, one man on the band. Uh, she's, that's with she's, me. Uh, she's not all there. I, I, all just, right. I really have to. I, I can't stop right now. But, but I, I, <laughs> yes, yes, she's you in a can. No, no. <laughs> Look, I, yes, I really have can. a thing about how sure women are wife? How women are treated. How women are treated in our society. That that what women really want and need, they rarely get, and they subjugate their own needs on behalf of men, and our culture has has endorsed that for the last 20 years. All right. Darren will tell you what subjugate means during the commercial. Rob, 18, <laughs> you're on Loveline. Yeah, hey, guys. I'm hey. supposed to hit, say, like, hey to Jake or something. Yeah. yeah How do you know about Jake, Jake dude? Scooby snack. All right. <laughs> How do you know about Jake? Well, How do you know Jake, man? 
Whoa. No, Relax, dude, Beavis. How do you know about Jake? No, like the screener chick told me. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. Jake is, Jake is John's dog. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, dog. Okay, but anyway. <laughs> um, like, all right, I got a little problem, and, like, I'm supposed to call you, so I'm calling you. And, okay, like, uh, I was a virgin for, like, a week ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Congratulations. Oh, thanks. Darren's uh, going to send you over a bottle rocket. <laughs> all right, but, uh... Like, All right. little, I guess a little nervousness problem or something. All right, spit it out, please. We're, we're seeing right. an example of that now and how he... How he uh... It's like an erection problem kind of thing. Like, I got it, and then the pants come off, it's gone. Mm -hmm. is, is this what happened a week ago? Yeah. And I, got then, like, down, yeah. I got that problem. I got that problem. How did you lose your virginity? Wait a minute, you let that go by? Well, oh, I, I, believe I, I, me, no, it's, joke, it's, all, joke. it's all in the fall. How'd you know? I heard the horror stories. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rob, anyway, how'd you lose your, your virginity if you couldn't hey, get it up? Hey, you two over there with your inner monologues. Go go in the corner. Rob? Let's go. Yeah, okay, I'm going to explain that. All right, it's like I had help. Help? Ish. From one girlfriend, like, help. Ish. Okay, listen. Uh, okay. We're talking to the Riddler here. Rob, <laughs> please. The show's only two hours. Help I know. All right, she, like, kind of a little... All right, she went down on you. Yeah. Because it was a limp. Well, yeah, and then, like, I got it. She gave it mouth to mouth and brought it back to life. Mm -hmm. And then it worked, right? Yeah. Well, what? sort of. And then did you, like, sort did, of did, you go, what? did you go further? Did you have sex, or? Yeah, we had sex. And then it worked, right? Well. For a little while. Well, like, what happened? Remember that call you had that went for four hours or whatever? Yeah, right. that guy was like, a freak. That happened a little, like, for the first. You went for five hours. Dude. 20. No, like a half hour, and then we had to stop. Well, that's like, normal. You had to stop because it went away or because... No, because, like, parents would stop. Because of what? Right. Like parents were Wait, there. so you're saying that after you got it up and you you guys were going for it, you you couldn't basically bust a nut? Right. Okay, and that's then, normal, dude. Yeah. All right. And I mean, or it can be normal. Okay. It happened to me the first time. It's it's really, it's one or the other. It's right. either, and this is your first time around, and I'm putting Rob on hold for a second. We'll get back to him. It's either you uh, ruin your shorts... Because you're so excited and it's premature. Yes, Darren being very candid with the hand up in the air. Or you're going all night and you just can't finish a job. It's usually one or the other. It's not what or, it... Be or or they, uh, p women, men commonly get a, no erection. They lose their erections. Right, right. It's always some form of dysfunction, all bad. I guess going for an hour not being able to finish would probably be... The lesser of all the evils, because at least you're, you're walking out of there with your head up, even though even though you didn't get any satisfaction. But you have to kind of dial yourself in sexually. I mean, the first time around, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, when you rent a car, <laughs> you guys know. No, seriously. No, I'm going somewhere. This is going to be great. Believe me, I'm going. Thank you, Darren. <laughs> you rent a car. You travel around a lot. You rent a lot of cars. You get in a car. You jump in behind the, the steering wheel there, and you, it starts raining. You want to turn the wipers on, but you turn the dome light on. Then you then you start honking the horn. <laughs> then you pull this thing on, and the headlights come on, because everything's somewhere else. Now, after a week of driving around town, you got it wired. You're turning the radio up. You're rolling the window down. No problem. It's mm. all second nature. You're taking but, a nap. But for the first... <laughs> right. You're drinking behind the wheel. But for the first few minutes in the new environment for the first day the test drive things are complicated things are different very good am i right that was so right, right this is what it's like when you're virgin you're I in a woman you're ask, test driving a woman i i, I just it comes down to this you know you're new you're a vir you're not a virgin anymore and you know you're starting to like oh sorry go ahead you're starting to score and everything if you fall off the horse just get right back on it again man that's right horse, I, wonder if, I wonder if he jacks off a lot I mean, yeah, if you do, man, that'll have a big. That has a lot I mean, to do. If you with know it. what you like, and if you can yeah. do it to yourself, I mean, yeah, but there's would... still a big difference between what you're doing to exactly. yourself. Absolutely. That's the whole point. Between getting your behind hand, your... but still, you can completely control that. Do you know what I mean? Right. So you're saying masturbation is good or bad for this? No, what I'm saying is, if if you know he's 15, he's been jacking off since he's 12 or 13 or something. The first time you actually have sex, you know, it's like you don't know how because you have to. You know, I, I make agree. yourself, you know, you have to make yourself get off just as much as whoever you're with. Do you know what I mean? Right. Um, and, you you know, I mean, the first time I had sex, when I lost my virginity, I didn't, you know, get a nut for 45 minutes. We talked about the, this the last time we, I was on. Because I didn't know how. You were do young. You, know I mean? you were right. like 14 or 13 or something. And it was the first time, and I didn't know how. I'm like... Eight. 
Okay, yeah, I was eight, but could have I, I, yeah, but. right. But it's it's no different than anything else, although we expect it to be different. I mean, your first day on the job, you basically sit back and observe. You're not; they don't put you at the register and tell you to handle the big clients or whatever. Your first day at school, you're walking around looking for your classes. Your first day anywhere, you have to get yourself dialed in. And your first time sexually, it's no different. You got to take some time. You got to learn where everything is. You got to learn where the but the button is for the wipers and the headlights take a little time just get right back on the horse but eventually time. you're gonna own that because car. you're gonna own that horse and you're gonna be jumping over <laughs> fences and you're gonna be doing 360 and then you're gonna fall off and end up like chris Reed. <laughs> Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191, fax number 310-854-4455. Here with John Simon, Darren and Charlie, all from Goldfinger, all back for their uh, triumphant uh, reunion with uh, the beautiful Love Line show. And uh, let's talk about the band. That's not. For a second. Uh, of course, the uh, big weenie roast uh, this Saturday, and that's kind of cool. And then what, what about it after that? Where are you guys going? Well, you want to hear how lucky we are? Yes. We, we're going to open for the Warp Tour, which let's, has... Let's start with Conan O'Brien. Yeah, Conan O'Brien we're doing. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. The Warp Tour we're doing with no effects, Pennywise, Fishbone, all those bands. How, how many off. legs of that uh, Warp Tour are you going to do? We're doing a month. And then we're doing the Buzzcocks, which is like... First Buzzcocks. Cool. One first. of my favorite bands. Like first. first them, then the Warp Tour, yeah. then we're doing the Sex Pistols. No, no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Okay. Then the sex pistols. <laughs> Should I explain actually? <laughs> Whoever then, knows the most. And then bad religion. So we wow. have a, we have a great r- great summer. I love bad religion. I love that band too. They were in here. I mean, I, I like them musically a lot, but My they're really band. cool guys. They're smart. They're a little bit older, a little bit more seasoned, pretty uh, educated. The one guy group and the others, <laughs> but the others aren't idiots. Either. No, no, no. In fact, it, most bands they seem like substantial people. You know, it's it's not. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, judging from the video. No, no, I'm you guys included. Believe me. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, when you look at the video, and they're we're talking about, I get boners. (laughs) Well, you know, (laughs) the majority of the band. All right, so you guys got a a full, full plate. Full plate, absolutely. And you'll be out all over the country. And when are you going to be on uh, Conan O'Brien so people can actually June nineteenth. Okay, and it uh, I guess it airs the same day, right? Mm -hmm, Okay, so June nineteenth. Look for uh, Goldfinger on Conan O'Brien. And it's back to the phones. We go, Danny, 17, you're on Love Line with Goldfinger. Goldfinger, I love you guys. Um, my cousin met you guys a couple of months ago. Um, he's, we've been, and he hung out with you guys, and we've been huge fans ever since. Where? Um, some, some club in L.A. Mm. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank what's you. His, what's his name? Um, Dave, Dave Cho. Mm. Um, the big, tall Asian guy. Anyways, um, who are the guys that are on the unlisted track on, the, on your CD, on the, doing that telephone conversation, Tim Dog and Nigel? I'm Tim Dog. Oh, for real? And Nigel's some uh, idiot in some, like, in trailer Buffalo. park white trash guy in Buffalo, New York. So uh, Darren is Tim Dog. Uh, all right. That's cool. That was, that's totally funny. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Is that anyway, it? Uh, is yes. that it? Darren's... Danny ran out of steam on that one. Carol, 39, you're on Loveline. Hi. Is Dr. Drew there, please? Yes, Yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, I live in Lodi, California, and I'm 39 years old, and my boyfriend is, like, 23 and he's down in state prison right now in Los Angeles for a probation violation for failure to do drug rehab. Mm. And after he left in November, I found out that he cheated on me with this girl. And um, she, the only way I found out was she followed me home from the store. And since then, I've got AIDS tests because she said that they didn't use a condom. But, um, like, he told me that nothing happened between them and all this other stuff. And then he finally admitted to me like about two or three months ago in a letter that he did do it with her and um so like right now i'm kind of leery about whether or not i should continue this relationship with him after he comes home because like he wants to come back you know and he's keeps saying that he's going to change and everything and but i told him that 12 weeks in a in a drug prison doesn't constitute a cure you know that and the, oh, he went to he went to one of the prisons where they make them they they force them through a rehab program too. Yeah. Right. Those actually are pretty successful, as I understand it. It's like anything else, though. If some any other treatment for addiction, if uh, somebody is really not willing to get with the program, and doesn't 
want to get better, isn't motivated to get better, they're not going to get better. It takes a lot of work. And the guy's 23, which means he may be a good five years off from making any substantial change. He's a rebel. Yeah. Do you think he will change, though? I mean, well, he's, he's we can't. I don't know if we. Want. He's cheated on me once. Carol. And everybody keeps saying, well, if he cheats once, he'll cheat again. I had an analyst tell me a couple of days ago, she said, that once the patterns develop, the only thing that changes them is years of therapy. So. Um, he, was, he was like um, the only living survivor of a van crash that happened like way back in 1992. Six people were killed, and he was the only living survivor, and it's taken him a long time. He hasn't even gotten over it. I mean, he, it's hard for him to talk about it and to deal with it, you know. Well, and, but that's not why he's a drug addict. Yeah, I know. That's but, not why he's a criminal. Carol. Stop making excuses for him. I'm, hey, I was going to say that. I'm trying to understand him, you know, where he's coming from, you know. Carol, and, he's a drug addict. He's coming from prison, Carol. Yeah, I know that. But. All right, listen. We're all looking at each other, and we're thinking loser. It's gotten real quiet here. Yes. Carol. You seem like a nice girl. You do. And you seem responsible, and you seem like you deserve a little better. Go to some Al-Anon, go to some codependency meetings, and maybe you'll get to understand what this is all about. Amy. Hello? 17, you're on Love Line with Goldfinger. Hi. Um, I guess you can say I'm kind of in a, um, a love triangle composed <gasps> of three girls. Okay, explain. Um, well, there's me, and I have a friend who's been hitting on me, but she doesn't really turn me on, and I told her I'm kind of straight so that she would... Kind of leave me alone about it. And she's part of the triangle? Yeah. I said the same thing to Darren during the commercial, by the way, but didn't, go ahead. It didn't work. Did <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm going to keep trying, though. I'm going to get back, back on that horse, but you continue. <laughs> Anyways, um, but I told her I was straight, but now the problem is I like this other girl, and um, <clears throat> she's a mutual friend of both of us. And um, I want to kind of know how to talk to the first one to tell her that I may not be straight, but I, she just doesn't. Do it for me, I guess. Well, listen. Why do you have to do that? You don't have to come clean with her as long as the girl who's a mutual friend doesn't let on that you two are no, going I mean, at it. We, we, she'd know. It, she would. People How? talk, yeah. She would, she's a talker? No, people do. Yeah, but can't you... Keep your mouth shut. Can't you keep your <laughs> legs open and your mouth shut? <laughs> Nice. <laughs> well, I just mean, can't you keep this between you and this other girl? Adam, do you remember what your dad told you that night? Yeah, my dad told me uh, yesterday uh, over uh, breakfast that I had a lot of bad karma coming my way from the <laughs> now poison. I know, what, I know what he's talking about. I was spouting over the air. Lay a power move on him. I backhand him and said, yeah, pops, go back to helping the world. <laughs> go back to your $30,000 a year job there, pops. Whoa. Hey, does the girl you like... Uh -huh. is, are the feelings reciprocated? Does she like you too? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm not even sure if she's into. Um, I know she's she's into guys. We're all, we're all of us. I don't think any of us. Have, well, I know for myself, I have never you know been in a relationship with a girl. But um, all three of us, I think, you know, wouldn't be completely turned off by the idea. How old are you? I'm 17, and both of them are too. Okay, if. If she's a talker or people talk, and yeah. you're in high school, yeah, and you've already kind of shine this other girl who dug you first uh -huh. okay so she may be a little resentful if you make a move on this other girl <laughs> and it uh and it turns out that she doesn't feel the same way about you yeah. um your life in your school is going to become instant hell <laughs> because the girl that you dig if she doesn't like you she's going to start saying oh so and so hit on me and she's a lesbian and <laughs> the other girl is going to start you know that's just going to set her yeah. off to start talking you know bad about you and then all of a sudden you're gonna be you know the school dyke excuse my language and that and anything in high school that sets you apart from everybody else is hell you might want to like if you're gonna experiment with that kind of thing uh -huh. find somebody that first of all doesn't go to your school uh -huh. you know what i mean because maybe you know Maybe maybe you are a lesbian and you, and you just don't know it yet, but that could really you know kind of traumatize you and screw you up for a long time, because what your peers think of you in high school is the most important thing, you know. I mean, I know it was when I was at high least school. that's the illusion. Yeah. 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 So that was uh, Charlie the Sage from Goldfinger, by the way, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie's right. Listen to him. You you know you examine the options a little more closely here. Do not move in. Look at yourself. Uh, uh, like uh, Field Marshal uh, Rommel up on a hill in Africa. Look well, through the binoculars for just a w little while longer before you commit to that full frontal assault because you could get ambushed and killed out there. Yeah, but she's, she's really hot. She looks like Mickey from Lush. All right, well, in that case, go for Whoa. it. Yeah, we had 
them in. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Wait, wait a minute. What? Good call, uh, man. Hold on. Did you almost give it her? Uh, hey, you know what? I know Mickey Lo- from Lost. She can just have the real thing. Listen, uh, producer Ann. Yeah. Let's uh, let's just finish up here, and then we'll play another lovely Goldfinger yes, song please. when we come out of the break. Okay. Oh, okay. Wow. One more. Oh. What a great voice she has. She's real sexy. Mm. Yeah. Charlie, Sounds your voice is pretty sexy too, man. <laughs> uh, I got I got to stop. Charlie, you have the most sexiest voice. You should be a DJ, man. Most sexiest. Listen, yeah, he does have that real say, that deep just voice. Just ever say now we're coming up with some. Uh, uh, just, just do something. Now, now an air supply superset. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was Kenny G. We'll be right back with an air supply superset. Yes! <laughs> smooth jazz. I, I got a semi smooth right now. Smooth jazz on K-Rock. Mike. Yeah. 21, you're on Love Line with Goldfinger. Hey, hey am I turning you on, Mike? What's up? Just say hi to the dog, too. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Bow, wow, wow. Oh, hey, yeah. yeah. Oh, speaking of dog, I gotta, I gotta give a shout out to my dead homies. <laughs> and all the homies locked down by the man. I just have to say that. Hey, I want to ask a few questions for you. I saw you guys out in Corona at the Showcase Theater. Oh, yeah, that was... Uh, that that show sucks. That, was the- that was with the Skeletons, right? Yeah, well, that was the Skeletons by yeah. the mail, too. Why'd the show suck? What it that? was a very ska what? crowd. We just... came in playing our crazy little punk Oh, rock. I thought the show kicked ass. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I Thank you very it. much. I saw you guys the next night at the Troubadour. Oh, cool. That show was great. Yeah, that you guys kicked ass, but... What do you guys think of the, the Corona scene? What, what do you think about that? Unbelievable. You're, it's it's kind of crazy. Like, like Darren knows, like he no, hangs I, out I, in no, Corona. I talked to some of those kids, and then like it's a really good scene, and like Great they have gear. that that club there, that showcase theater, <laughs> yeah. is packed all the time. Has packed all the time, and they have a lot of lot of good bands. You talking about Corona Del Mar? No, no, Corona out in East Corona. Just the Riverside. That one little club yeah, has a, yeah. every, oh, okay. every night is like a, a big band. It like, seems like a really cool scene out there. Yeah, kids are really into little, music. Uh, used to be a little crappy movie theater when I was a kid. All right, this is a national show, Mike. You want to bore the other 24 no, 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 Phillies? <laughs> Your name, uh, Charlie. What? How do you smoke through the whole show? <laughs> <laughs> I do not understand that. So you, had, you had a cigarette in your mouth both nights through the whole I show. I, I, I tried to do that the next night. I was playing guitar. I tried to have a cigarette in my oh, mouth. Oh, dude, it's not for amateurs, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lots of training. I, I have uh, actor actually Drew operated on me and gave me iron lungs. Do you do one of those things where you put it in the frets of the the bass or whatever and look cool? The guitar. Well, um, every cool scenario Charlie does. Um, really? I I don't, I don't know. I, I just I, I I really like to smoke, and when I'm you know when I play, I just kind of don't feel you know complete unless I'm smoking, and that may I don't know. It's just. I don't know. It's just something I do. Do you know what I mean? I don't really you know how to explain it. Too, What's this guy's name? Mike? How old is he? Yeah, forget about Mike. He's gone. Now listen. You know what you guys got to work into the act? Speaking of the cool things for bands to do. Let my hair on fire. Right in the middle. Relax there. <laughs> right in the middle of the show when you're I mean, during a guitar, not during any singing, but like during a guitar solo. Darren, you're out of this one because you're just banging away on the drums like a monkey in the back. <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of the guys, you walk up to each other while you're playing the instruments. You whisper in each other's ear, but you don't say anything. You just go like, mugga, mugga, mugga. And then at the same time, you simultaneously, you both laugh and walk away nodding your head. You, 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 are you picturing band, that? Bro. That's why, <laughs> that's why you're Darren. on the radio, yeah. bro. <laughs> mugga, mugga, mugga. Oh, love line, phone number, 1-800-LOVE-191, fax number, 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Crowley, Dr. Drew is a board-certified physician, Dixon Resistance, blah, blah, blah. We're here with John Simon, Darren, and Sir Charles, all of Goldfinger. They have a CD out called Goldfinger. I suggest everybody go out there and get it, and if you already have one, get another one. Because there's songs on it like nothing to prove... And it goes a little... Oh, we're not going? <laughs> All right. Engineer Mike was so excited about the pyrotechnic show, setting up the microphones, he forgot to cue up the CD. All right. Nothing to Prove by Goldfinger. Nice. Nothing to Prove by Goldfinger. Arr. My my favorite band. We're almost as ready as, as angry as Corn. Can you tell? Corn. Uh, Are you ready? Corn they uh, rule. I, they do. I, 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 well, you know, I was out on stage. Uh, we were telling this story last night in Minneapolis Don't doing, my, yourself, Adam. doing my corn call. Hmm. Corn <laughs> call. I like corn! that. Corn! <laughs> and then the five, six, seven. Corn! Yeah, that's, I think I got hit my second roll of nickels at that point. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to someone who's been on hold for now 110 
minutes. Jeff. Yes. Oh, I thought he was asleep. <laughs> All right. Dude, why have you been waiting so long? You ruled it. Okay, this is the question. It's for Dr. Drew. Uh, yes, I, I, I'm sorry. We're out of time, Jeff. <laughs> no, no, we're coming back. Jeff. <laughs> Can I go? Go ahead. Uh, no. Okay. Among the few times I've heard the show, I've heard uh, Dr. Drew briefly mention the detrimental effects of marijuana. Right. And uh, since I've been smoking, I'm 19 right now, I've been smoking since I've been about 12, and I've studied a lot about marijuana just because I like to know about the things I do. And uh, I'd like to hear the straight dope, no pun intended, on uh, long-term oh. emotional, psychological effects of marijuana. No, that's without psychological. including the classic textbook ones. How how much do you smoke though? How much do I smoke? Um, quite often, probably. Here's the syndrome. Here it is. Okay. If, if people are going to smoke pot occasionally on weekends, that sort of thing, it is probably not going to hurt anybody more than alcohol does. And the notion that somehow somebody is going to smoke pot here and there, and then suddenly over years kind of get more and more into it, and then suddenly be doing it all the time, also does not happen. If somebody's going to become addicted to marijuana. The first couple times people smoke pot, they usually get no effect. But when you finally get high from it, when you've sort of primed the pump to the point that you have action experience where you get high, mm -hmm. people either find that kind of okay or they find it a superb experience and they love it. Right. And from that day forth, you preoccupy about that drug and you pursue it on a daily basis. And that daily pursuit will go somewhere between 1 and 20 years. And during that time, you will become increasingly depressed, have increasing memory problems, have difficulty in engaging in life in various ways. And as the depression becomes worse, typically what happens is people with marijuana dependency switch to something else. And that something else in 1996 is typically speed. Right. And so, and then speed takes people down fast, and that's what people have ultimately come to treatment for. But the marijuana dependency syndrome does not remit, does not get better without treatment. It usually graduates to something else before people come to treatment, um, but it's a very, very serious condition. All right. Now, I'll give you my experience, because uh, I'm 32. You're not a, a marijuana addict. Please, Drew. I wasn't speaking for myself. But R relax. <laughs> Please, relax. Where I have Mike, shut your mic off. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, yes. Drew, yes, his high horse. It's out of the barn. Only 10 minutes left in the show, but always time enough for Drew's horse to get out of the barn. I was talking to a friend of mine. Uh, it was yeah. last night or the night before. Now, this guy I went to high school with. Love him dearly. He is one of my friends that smokes pot on a real regular basis. Uh -huh. And... He's an intelligent guy, and he's a cool guy, and I like the guy. And he never graduated into harder stuff, a few beers once in a while, but always smoked pot religiously all the way since high school. Now, I used to be a carpenter. He just moved into a house. And I was having a discussion with him on wall textures and coverings and things like that. And I was trying to explain to him that in the old days they used to use lath and plaster. Then they moved on to button board and plaster. Then they moved on to drywall, and that's where it is today. I was given the evolution of wall covering. I had to talk to him for about 45 minutes about the whole button board concept. I mean, I was going, listen, here's the deal. Knock it off. Here's the deal. You take the button board, you nail it onto the studs, then they plaster over it. Adam, you're rectoring, dude. Is there a point? The point is this. He could have had new, no capacity for new learning. I was yelling at this guy yeah. for an hour on the phone trying to tell him a yeah. very simple yeah. concept. Yeah. It was a real easy one. Yeah. And he was having a lot of difficulty right. uh, new, deciphering it. New learning goes early. The ability to learn new new things is, is and retain information is just greatly impaired. Now, now the guy's not retarded or anything, but I realize the pot sort of did slow him down a little. What's step. interesting though is that within a year or two of stopping pot, most of that comes back. Oh, really? Yeah. So All right. Good so I'll be able to explain to him about button board more? In a couple years if he's able to stop. All right. He'll just have to graduate to speed. <laughs> you want me to tell the button board story again, guys? No. <laughs> What's the stuff that came after Well, you board? guys turned on me real fast. <laughs> Drywall. You, came got, like, you got like evil oh, eyes. Lath and plaster. Lath and plaster. Well, well, I get very serious when I talk I about home and button program. Board. <laughs> I hate button board! <laughs> Jennifer, 22. Hi, guys. You're on the love line with Goldfinger. Hi. Um, I have two questions. The first one is for Charlie. Um, oh, yeah. In your song, Mabel, what is this reference to a tube of cookie dough all about? That's his cock. Um, is Jesus. it about you? Hey, Darren, can you edit yeah, yourself just is, a little bit? But there's no Mabel. It's a fictional story. It's like a joke. I figured that much. Okay. Parts are fictitious. <laughs> Charlie is very well endowed, though, if that's your question. Absolutely. Ooh. Is he? Yes. Is he? 
He loves to walk around naked too. Really? Yeah. And, he, to and know. you know, you know, you when you trim your pubes too, right? It makes everything just. They, I've explained that. It's like a weeds growing up around a mailbox yeah. post. Trim yeah. them down, it's, the it, post looks. It looks longer. like a baby's arm. Really? It's, it's scary. When he pees, it's like he's wrestling with something. It's the scariest thing you will ever see. It's like a fireman competition. Yeah, yeah. he will. He's the most modest guy I know. He'll never talk about it, but I'm telling you. But he'll sure give you 20 bucks to talk about it. For him. Yeah. I mean, We're it's like we are so amazed by this thing. Cookie dough anyway. Yeah. <laughs> cookie dough, like, you know, like Pillsbury cookie dough, you buy at a store, you know? Like the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty lock. simple. It's like the, ch the chub pack that like the cheap beef comes in. <laughs> <laughs> There's no chips. There's no spots. A little oatmeal, maybe. <laughs> yeah. No, Charlie, Charlie's packing the chub pack. <laughs> Right. Anyway, Jennifer. Question okay. number two. And my second question is, um, I'm 22. I'm engaged to be married. I'm very in love with my fiancé. And ever since I was very young, I've always had this, um, I guess I matured a lot sexually faster than a lot of my peers. Um, what I mean by that is, I guess mentally, I've always been very sexually aware, I guess. And as I got older, it pretty much progressed to a liking to pornography. And since I've been 16, I've had, you know, pretty much a collection of videos and toys and whatnot. And now that I am with my fiancé, who I love very much, and it, it makes me feel very strange because sex with him is such a spiritual experience. I mean, sex in general is supposed to be an, a spiritual experience. And it makes me feel like I'm almost cheating on him because I still have this interest in, you know, pornographical. Things. You're just expanding your spirituality. And well, I wondered. If Ron Jeremy's like the shaman. <laughs> Jennifer, you have nothing, nothing, nothing to worry about. Well, yes. It's healthy. And, and where did this come from? I mean, what? It came from Van Nuys, California. <laughs> and it's, there's nothing wrong with it. Some people, it, it's really, uh, pornography is like uh, liver. Some people taste it, put, they spit it out. Other people can't get enough of it. It's just one I of those I'm things. I guess I'm one of those people. I just, I'm... I don't know. It just it turns me on more than anything else. Does your fiance, it makes me feel weird. Does your fiance join in with you in the viewing? No. See, this is this is the thing. He doesn't do that because I feel strange about that. All right, but so you I hide it from him. No, not exactly. He knows about it. He knows about it, but we haven't engaged in it together. It's right. like something I keep to myself. Does he care? Does he care? I mean, does he care that you like have this like? Fetish. No, actually, he likes it. I mean, he likes. And there's no problem. All right, yes, include him. And I'm wrapping up here because we're not going to have enough time when we come back to do our whole pyrotechnics thing, which uh, is Adam, really the thrust of the show. Adam, right? There's a cop car sitting outside. It's been there for about ten minutes. Oh, oh that's oh. Engineer Mike. Oh, so we got a light. We got a light off in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. Oh, really? Oh, that sucks. We have to light it. They're on to us. Serious? All right, Maybe well, they just came to like oversee it. Yeah. How would they yeah, know? Hey, can I make listen. a quick porno note here? Just yeah, real yeah, very yeah, fast. Yeah. What's can the blonde girl that works here? Touch yourself. R Producer Ann. Producer Ann. Okay. Mm. When we were in Washington D.C. and everybody was hanging out in the lounge at the hotel after the show, there was this. Everybody's like, "Go to room ten. There's this big poker party, right?" So I went up, and you know, this is on the other side of the country. So I go up to room ten. Why to, to the table over there? To hang out at this poker party. And I walk in, the first thing I see is producer Ann sitting on the couch watching porno in the oh, hotel room. Yeah, she can't get enough. Isn't that rad? Yes, she's been begging to see my penis since I started working here. <laughs> <laughs> Engineer Ann, you, can, you have no time for rebuttal. We'll get to it after this. <laughs> All right, we're coming to you live from the parking lot here at Loveline, as promised, the final pyrotechnic show. No, don't go too far away. We have uh, pyrotechnic engineer Darren down at the end there with a lighter. He has the device in his hand. Darren, are you ready? Light it off, buddy. we got about 20 seconds here. He's lit the fuse. He's running back to me, and here it goes. Is No cops so far. All right. Everyone, run back in and hide. <laughs> oh, thank you, Darren. Thank you, Goldfinger. Thank you, listeners. Uh, we'll be back on Sunday. Uh, Goldfinger, we will see you at the lovely Weenie Roast. Love you. Thank you. Uh, 
Oh, I can't hear anything anymore. Thank you, uh, Lisa. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Engineer Mike. Thank you, lovely producer Ann. And until Sunday, mahalo. You've been listening to Loveline. The opinions expressed on Loveline, especially by Adam Carolla, are not necessarily those of the staff, management, or sponsors. Or even the character voices. Loveline, produced by Ann Wilkins for Westwood One Entertainment.